Hey, what's up everyone? We've got an awesome video today. I'm really excited about this. We're actually gonna take an image all the way to print. So we're gonna go through file prep, we're gonna sharpen, we're gonna do everything, and then we're actually gonna click the submit order button and get a physical print that I'm gonna ship to my house that we can actually check out. Okay, we're gonna use Bay Photo and we're gonna get a 36 by 24 inch vertical acrylic print. Now Bay Photo is kind of my go-to do-it-all print lab. I've used them for like a decade. I just love the quality that you get uh, for every product, you know, whether it's a, a paper print, a metal print, or an acrylic print, what you get for the price is just amazing. And they've got great customer service. So we're gonna print with Bay Photo, and we're gonna use my favorite medium, which is acrylic. I love acrylic prints. Whenever I get a, a, a big print, or I just want the highest quality, I'm always printing on acrylic. You get this really unique, like three dimensionality with an acrylic print that you just don't get with other mediums. And I think that the vibrance and the detail, I mean, it, it's just my favorite and I think the best print uh, medium out there if you just really want like to, to step back and say, wow. So we're gonna do that today. We're gonna print on acrylic and we're gonna get a chance to actually look and see what it looks like, you know, the, the physical product looks like at the end. So I think that's a really cool feature of this video. Okay, so we're gonna do a Lightroom and Photoshop section as well. Lightroom will be kind of our quick and easy guide. Now you can do a lot of great file prep in Lightroom, but Photoshop just gives you a little bit more control. Photoshop is my preferred workflow. So we're gonna be a little bit more in depth in Photoshop and the file that we actually submit for print will be the Photoshop one. Now, last thing, you want to make sure that your monitor is calibrated before you're doing anything with printing. So I previously did a video on calibration. I'll just link that up here, but make sure you're calibrating uh, before you go through this print process. I think that's everything though. So let's get started. We'll, we'll jump on the Bay Photo website. We'll look at some things and then we'll get right into Lightroom and Photoshop. We'll do some proofing and then yeah, we'll actually submit the order and see what this print looks like. So stay tuned and uh, let's get started. So we're going to start on Bay Photo's website. So I've navigated to bayphoto.com and here's their front page. Now to start, we're actually going to go up to the support tab up here and we're going to click on FAQs. Okay, now we're going to navigate to file size and file preparation guidelines. So this is a really helpful document. This basically lays out everything that we need to adhere to when we're going through the print preparation process. So it's gonna, Bay Photo is gonna let us know what file types are accepted, you know, what, what color profiles they want. So let's just go through kind of what we have uh, on this page, at least some of the key points. So I think the most important thing to kind of read over here is this file preparation. So we, we have a list of accepted file formats. It tells us if we can have 8-bit versus 16-bit in color spaces. The big thing that I take away here is that they take JPEG and TIFF, and TIFF is an uncompressed file format, but they prefer JPEG. Now, usually when I am prepping images for print, I am always sending JPEGs. I just don't think there is a huge benefit to sending a extremely large file type like a TIFF. So I'm going to send JPEG, and that's what we're going to do um, during this process. They want 8-bit RGB, and JPEGs are always 8-bit, so we don't have to worry about this too much. This is an important one. Embedded color space should be either sRGB or Adobe RGB. So again, to make things simple, we are going to use uh, sRGB, so we will embed that color space during this, this process. Um, now, if we, we scroll down a little bit more, uh, they just have some more info, information on what they want for a JPEG. Um, they have some information on naming, and then they have some information about uh, color correction in monitor calibration. Now, remember I said having a calibrated monitor is essential, and I recommend doing that uh, before going through this process. Okay, so that's the most important uh, information on on this uh, on this web page. We do have some information on recommended file size, but uh, we'll talk more about this when we're actually working on the image uh, in Lightroom and Photoshop. 
So we're going to come back up to the top here, and we're also going to find another popular article here on the right called Bay Photo Labs ICC Profile. So we're going to click on that. Now, an ICC profile is very useful. So um, most labs out there are going to have an ICC profile. Now, what this profile does is it allows us to soft proof an image. So it, it basically allows us to simulate how an image might look uh, when printed by just analyzing it on our computer monitor. So what we're actually going to do is install this ICC profile and then we can use this ICC profile from Bay Photo to soft proof in Lightroom and also in Photoshop. So it's a very useful way to kind of get a feel for how an image might look in terms of its tonality and colors um, when it's actually printed out. So this is a great page here. There's actually information on how to install the ICC profile. Uh, and then it's going to give us instructions on how to set up the profile in Photoshop as well as how to set up the profile in Lightroom. So when we open up both programs, Lightroom and Photoshop, I'll walk through how to set these up. The most important thing is that we install the ICC profile so our computer can actually access it when we're using Lightroom and Photoshop. So it's very simple. You're just going to click. If you're on a Mac system, you click here to download. If you're on a Windows system, you click to download and then follow these instructions uh, to install the profile on your computer. And then, like I said, it will be available for use. So the big takeaways here, um, we're going to basically prep a JPEG, we're going to embed sRGB, and we're going to download this Bay Photo uh, ICC profile so that we can use it to soft proof in Lightroom and Photoshop. And the benefit of soft proofing is it's going to allow us to simulate how our image might actually look when printed out. And, and we can do that by just looking at the image on our monitor. These are some good things to know before we get started. And now we can finally uh, start to get into Lightroom and Photoshop and actually look at the image that we're going to print and, and start doing some of those things like sharpening and soft proofing. All right, so we're going to start in Lightroom and here's the image that we're going to be printing. This is a special image for me. I took this while on a 10 day backpacking trip to Gates of the Arctic National Park in Northern Alaska. And this was my favorite image from the trip. Beautiful fall color, a really nice uh, you know, S curve with the, the creek and beautiful mountains in the background. So I love this image and I'm really excited to see how it turns out on acrylic. So here's kind of the workflow. We're gonna make some adjustments to the image. And when I say adjustments, we're gonna do things like adjust the brightness, adjust the contrast, maybe make some color adjustments. And we're also gonna sharpen. So step two would be sharpen. And then step three, we're going, we're going to actually export the file for print. Now, what I recommend is uh, right now I'm working on a processed final image. So I processed this image in Photoshop and I saved it as a TIFF. And I just brought it back into Lightroom as a TIFF. Now, before I make any adjustments, what I want to do in Lightroom is create what's called a virtual copy. Now I'm doing this because I, I want to preserve this original TIFF file because this processed image, it looks great on screen, right? It looks great on the website. If you open it up on Instagram or Facebook, it, it looks great. It's dialed in there. So I'm going to create a virtual copy. So I always have this original and I'm not actually adjusting, uh, you know, data from this, this processed image. So I'm going to go down to the film strip here and I'm going to right click on the image. And what, what you're going to do here is go up to this option here. It says create virtual copy. So I'm going to click that. And now you'll see if I look in the film strip, I've got my image here and it just says copy to. So you'll get some designation like that. So we're going to, this is, this is our, our proof copy. We're going to make adjustments to this, this virtual copy that we just created. And again, that's just uh, preserving our original file. Okay. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is make a brightness adjustment because in my experience when printing on something like metal or acrylic, those mediums tend to print dark. So I usually overcompensate when I'm printing on metal or acrylic because I know that, like I said, when the, when the print comes out, it's going to be a little bit darker. So what I'm going to do is go over to uh, the 
the, the right panel here. And I'm going to start with the histogram because not only does the image look a little bit dark, even though it does look good on screen, I can see there's a lot of data that's kind of favoring this, this you know, left-sided histogram, right? Lots of darker tones. I also have some space here on the right that I can push the data and push my highlights before I get clipping. So I'm going to come down here to my exposure slider and I'm going to push this to the right and I'm going to go you know, pretty far, maybe somewhere around there. So now when I look at the image, everything does look better, but you can see I'm, I'm definitely losing some color and, and my highlights, although they're not showing as being blown out on the histogram, my highlights are just losing a little bit of detail, at least to my eye. So I'm going to counter that by coming down and just dropping my highlights a little bit, you know, maybe somewhere in there just to bring back some of the color. I'm, I'm really watching this hillside here. Okay. Um, other than that though, I think tonality, you know, my, I think contrast looks good. So usually when I'm, when I'm making an initial adjustment, just to prep an image for printing on, on anything really, I'm usually making a tonal adjustment. So I'm probably brightening the exposure. I tend to edit uh, very dark. So dark images just don't do well on print, whether it's paper, metal, acrylic, canvas, anything. So I'm usually making an exposure adjustment um, and then kind of countering that with, with highlights just to bring back some of that detail. So let's just say this is a good starting point for us right now. Okay, the next thing we're going to jump into is soft proofing. So uh, now that I kind of have a, a balanced exposure, at least with my histogram, right? It looks brighter, things look good. I'm going to soft proof. Now, soft proof is actually uh, very easy. Well, I should say it's easy to soft proof in Lightroom. Um, in the toolbar here, you should see a checkbox that says soft proofing. And if I hover over it, you can see the keyboard shortcut is S. Now, if you're not seeing this, just come over to this uh, drop down here and you, you can toggle on soft proofing. So to soft proof, all I have to do is check this box and let's remember again what soft proofing is. So soft proofing is uh, using a profile from like a printer or another device and we're using that profile to kind of simulate how an output might look. You know how our our print might look on paper or better yet how this image that we're looking at on our screen might actually look on paper so when i check that box you're going to have some options up here and remember in the last segment we downloaded that bay viewing icc profile um, so if you're not seeing bay viewing here what you have to do is just click here and you'll get uh, three defaults here all you have to do is go down to click other and um, what you'll see here is if you installed the ICC profile correctly, and remember those instructions were on the Bay Photo website, you should see this Bay Viewing profile. And you can check that and click OK. Now, I also know from what Bay Photo says on their website in terms of their ICC profile and the recommendations, they want intent set to uh, perceptual, and then we are not checking simulate paper and ink. So now if I press S, and I go from, this is again, this is without soft proofing on to soft proofing. We can see a little change, right? Not much, not much is changing. But if we watch this highlighted area here, you can see more saturation, um, maybe a little darker. And when I soft proof, you can see those colors are maybe just out of the gamut for the printer that, you know, or the printers that Bay Photo is using. So this is usually what you'll see. Um, usually you're going to see when, when soft proofing, you'll see a shift, uh, in a color where either it's, there's too much saturation or it's just out of gamut and you'll see a change like this. So what I'm going to try to do here is correct for this the best I can. So I think the first thing I'll do is go down on the right side here and I'll go into the HSL tab because this allows me to specifically, uh, target an area. And I think all I want to do here is maybe just add some saturation. You know, I can do, I can keep pressing S to kind of see before and after. And honestly, it just looks a little desaturated. So I'm, I'm going to try and add a little bit of saturation. And then I'm actually pretty happy um, with how this image looks color-wise. So I think I'm going to come down here. Um, 
I'm just gonna guess I'll, I'll grab my orange slider and move and it does look like it's um, picking up some orange there so you can see Lightroom also just gave me a uh, a good heads up it says create virtual copy for soft proofing so anytime I toggle on soft proofing and I um, I make an adjustment you'll get this pop-up and remember this is great because we don't want to edit the original so what Lightroom doesn't know is I already did make a virtual copy so I can actually just make this um, we can just make this a proof okay so let's come in here and let's kind of fine-tune this so I think I'm gonna grab uh, Orange saturation, push it a little bit. Maybe yellow, let's see where yellow's at. Yellow's in there a little bit too, so maybe a little bit of yellow. So that looks pretty good. I'll come down to history here and I'll just do a, we'll do a before and an after. So you can see there's some, some color that's come back there. Um, so I actually think this looks pretty good. And again, if I toggle, if I go back, um, and toggle between the, the, the proof preview and the normal view, it's going to be really hard, I think, for, for me to get that, that saturation dialed in. But maybe somewhere around there looks pretty good, actually. And I want to be careful because I don't want to saturate the rest of the image, right? So um, this looks good. I'm, I'm happy with this. Now, one thing I'm noticing with the proof, too, is it might just be because I'm viewing on white, but it looks like there's a, maybe a little bit too much contrast uh, in this image. So I'm going to come back up and I think I might grab my black slider and just push it a little bit. Maybe maybe around like 10 or 15, somewhere in there. And it's tough to see, but that's just uh, it's just giving us a slight boost in the, in the darks here. And uh, I could play around, see if that highlight slider dropping in a little bit lower brings anything back. But you know what? I'm I'm pretty happy with that. And we'll just do here's before, here's after. So everything's looking a little bit more balanced. Um, it it looks good to me. So um, I'm gonna toggle soft proofing off and. Uh, we're, we're going to talk about sharpening now. So w with soft proofing, again, it, it seems complicated, but it's as simple as installing that ICC profile, using the ICC profile with Bay Photos recommendations, and you don't need to do much. You know, there's sometimes I soft proof and I don't change anything. Now you can see with this image, there was a slight shift in the hue and saturation of this area. So when I was making adjustments, that's kind of what I was focused on. But, but I'll be honest, there's some images that I print where when I soft proof, everything looks good. Okay, so moving on, now we're going to sharpen. So let's go down to the detail panel here in Lightroom. Now, what we're gonna be doing here when we're sharpening is something called output sharpening. And there's two forms of sharpening. There's input sharpening and output sharpening, okay? Input sharpening is, is um, is basically for a raw capture. So raw files that are a little bit soft. They need a little bit of you know glossing over. They need a little bit of um, very fine detail sharpening. So you'll see when you open a raw file in Lightroom, usually in this detail panel, you'll see a default amount set to like 40. You'll see uh, you'll see detail set to 25, radius at one, masking at zero. So good input input sharpening. Um, I guess some settings to use that I usually am, uh, am using is around 40 to 50 for a mount. And then I'll bring up this masking slider. So I'm only sharpening like edges and areas of high detail. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the masking slider, we're about to use it here as well. But, but that's important. If you're shooting raw, you need to do some input sharpening. So I do input sharpening and then I process my image. And then when I'm getting ready to print, this is where I'm going to do kind of my second uh, level or second layer of sharpening. Now I like to zoom in to 100% when I'm sharpening and I'll, I'll just kind of zoom in to maybe this area, uh, you know, somewhere around here. So we get, we can see the foliage, we can see the mountains, we can also see a little bit of the sky. And I'm just going to start by adding, adding some sharpening, you know, um, and this varies on an image by image basis, but you can see, so here's zero. When I bring it up to like 60, I'm starting to get de fine detail, right? Now, if I push this to 150, you can kind of see, and if I zoom in even more, let's zoom into 200 here. You can see everything's getting a little bit, 
a little pixelated, right? It's too much sharpening. So, and if I change the radius, you know, we start to get some really ugly artifacts and the image is starting to look a little bit crunchy. That's kind of the word we use for this over pixelization that uh, we're getting. So what I like to do is just kind of start with sharpening and I like to bring it up to kind of a level where I start to see some detail. So if I just go before here, here's no sharpening. Here's with 77 points. You know, you can see there's definitely more detail coming out. Now radius uh, depends, you know, I, I usually like my radius around like this one to 1.5 area. It depends on the image. Um, I think here maybe a little bit of a larger radius like 1.3 looks pretty good. And the radius is going to be a little bit dependent too on the resolution uh, of file that you're working with. This is from a Z7, so 45 megapixels. Um, I just find that 1 to 1.5 works really well. Now detail, I usually leave at the default of 25. If I push this out, it's, a, it's like an extension of radius. Like it, it gives us some fine uh, sharpening that we're really not getting uh, by adjusting this radius slider. So I usually leave this at 25, but I actually, I'm pushing it up here to like 50, 60, and I actually like what we're getting. I like how it's bringing out a little bit of the foliage. We're getting these really nice striations in the peak here. So let's do a, a before and after. So this was no sharpening. This is where we're at now. So let's just do that again. And I'll toggle it a few times. You can see we're getting much more detail, right? Much more detail. So this is looking pretty good. Um, and I might just push this amount a little bit further as well, maybe around 85 or so. And again, what I'm looking for is something like this. I want fine details to be brought out, but I don't want to over, over sharpen where I get like this. It's almost like this artistic filter effect, right? I'm getting a lot of noise in the image. You can just tell by looking it's over sharpened, right? So um, when I dial this back to like 85 and we can see here's over sharpened, here's a good amount of sharpening. And then let's do before, here's before, here's after. So you can see the details starting to come out. Now, what's really great about this detail panel is this masking slider. This masking slider is gonna allow us to selectively sharpen because there are areas in this image that we really wanna sharpen and bring detail out. The fall foliage, the edges of the mountain, you know, the details in the mountain. We definitely wanna bring those areas out, but there's also the flowing water and there's also the sky, which is soft. We want that diffusion. We don't wanna bring a lot of detail back in there. And anytime we're sharpening an area, even if it's a mount like this, we are introducing a little bit of noise. So I'd rather keep those areas clean. So what we're gonna do is use this masking slider. I'm gonna hold down Alt, um, it's Option if you're on a Mac. I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option. I'm gonna left click this slider and I'm gonna push it to the right. And now what we're seeing here is this kind of black and white overlay, right? Well, this is masking. So we think in grayscale terms where black is concealing an adjustment, or in this case, black is concealing the sharpening, and white is revealing the sharpening. So if we think in those terms, you can see a lot of the sky now and some of that creek are being uh, are not getting that sharpening effect, which is exactly what I wanted, right? So I might push it a little further. I think a good medium is like right around 50, because I do want that, that foliage to get a lot of that sharpening, and I definitely want the background uh, th those background mountains and the edges to be sharpened. So I'll release, and I think this is a, a good spot to be. So overall, uh, I'm happy with how this image looks. I think we are ready now if we want to, to, to basically export this file. I think we're ready to send this image in for print. So let's walk through how we might do that. So we're going to go up to File, and we're going to choose the Export dialog. And we're gonna get this box that pops up. Now, whether you're exporting for web, if you're exporting for print, this is this is the one way to export in Lightroom. And we get a lot of great options here. So let's just walk through the most important ones. The first is export location. So this is important, right? Because this is gonna decide where this image actually goes. So I'm gonna export it to my desktop. 
but I could also also choose to put it in a subfolder. So I could check this box and I could label this like something like uh, you know file for print or or maybe you have um, you know maybe you're putting all your print files in a certain subfolder. You can either choose that subfolder if you already have it created or you can create it right now when we're doing when we're going through the export. So um, if you do want to choose a different export to location, you can click the drop down. You have a lot of different options here. Um, if you choose specific folder, you can actually come down here. You'll get this this option now, this folder option. You can click choose and you can navigate anywhere on your computer. I'm just going to choose my desktop and we will continue to go down here. So file naming, this is up to you. Sometimes I will rename to like a custom name and um, I will, I'll choose like uh, something different than the TIFF file. So if I come down to edit here, there's a bunch of uh, a bunch of things I can choose from, you know, like image name. So I'll just delete everything here. Let's say I insert the file name and then let's say I, you know, maybe I want to just insert some custom text here. So I can insert custom text and uh, I can just make this here. I'll just make this, I'll click done. And now I can choose the custom text and I could type in something like, you know, print. So it's not, it's just keeping things a little bit different. So I usually don't do this, but it's a way you can organize if you want. So I'll uncheck that. Video, we don't need to worry about. File settings. So this is an important one. Remember, uh, we want to send Bay Photo a JPEG, right? We want to use the sRGB color space. So this is where you, you designate those things. So image format, I can choose a lot of different things. I can choose a TIFF file, but I'm going to choose JPEG. I'm going to set the quality to 100. Now, some say that once you hit like that 80, uh, 80 point value for quality, there's really no difference versus 100, but I push it to 100 when I'm printing. And then color space, we want set to sRGB. Now, if we come down to image sizing, we could check resize to fit here, but we want to send the full resolution file for print. We're doing a 36 by 24. We want to use all those 45 megapixels. So I'm not going to resize here. Now, I do have the option to do some output sharpening, but we just did that in the detail panel, and I highly recommend you do that uh, manually because you'll just have more control over what's being sharpened and you know the the radius and level of, of sharpening whether it's fine detail or a little bit more broad now you can also do some other things you could include your copyright um, you could add a watermark I don't do those things so really we're all set it's very simple right make sure that uh, you, you designate a location you can rename if you want and then just make sure you're working with JPEG and sRGB so now when I click export that image is going to go out to my desktop in that folder named file file for print. It'll be a, a, a JPEG with the full resolution. And then we can go on Bay Photos website and submit that file for print. So again, this is our walkthrough in Lightroom. This is how I prep images uh, for print in Lightroom. In our next segment, we're going to cover how I do it in Photoshop. And just a reminder, Photoshop is my preferred workflow. So we'll be working on this file in Photoshop and the, the end result in Photoshop, that final proofed image in Photoshop is the one we'll be submitting to Bay Photo for print. But Lightroom does a great job. It gets you pretty much all the way there. Um, and, and as you can see, it's a very powerful program and it's intuitive. It's definitely much simpler than what we're gonna be doing in Photoshop, but you have more control and more a greater ability to kind of fine-tune things so we're going to jump into Photoshop and kind of walk through a similar process at least with the same concepts in mind and we're going to get this image ready for print all right so now we're going to go through my preferred workflow in Photoshop so I've opened this TIFF file directly into Photoshop and we're going to start with just setting up our proofing workspace after that, we'll go through, we'll make some adjustments similar to the ones we did in Lightroom, but we'll do a few more adjustments and sharpening adjustments that are a little bit more controlled and focused. So let's set up uh, our proofing workspace with that Bay Photo ICC profile. So we're gonna go up to the menu here and we're gonna go to view. And our first two options are related to soft proofing. So the first thing we need to do is go to proof setup 
and you'll have a, a bunch of color profile options here. You're going to want to click on custom and we're going to get this um, this dialog box that comes up and the big thing here is device to simulate. So this is where we want that Bay Photo ICC profile selected. So if this is your first time opening this, this pop-up box, there's a good chance you're not going to see this profile here. So you, you're going to want to click the drop down and now you'll see a lot of different profiles. So if you scroll down and you start moving down um, t sort of towards the middle, this is where all my my device profiles are. So all the ICC profiles on my computer. I have a bunch for various monitors I use, but you'll see if you've installed that Bay Photo ICC profile, it should be right here at the top of the list or at least somewhere in this section. So you're gonna wanna click on that and then if you remember from our file prep section, uh, these are the exact settings that Bay Photo recommends. So the most important thing is just making sure you have the device to simulate set to the Bay Photo ICC profile. After that, we click OK. And now if I go back up to view, uh, I can either toggle soft proofing by clicking uh, proof colors here or using the, the shortcut Control Y or Command Y on a Mac. So I'm going to leave this unchecked for now because the first thing I want to do in Photoshop is actually uh, do kind of a similar thing to what we did in Lightroom. Remember I mentioned that acrylic and metal generally print dark. And if we, you know, we look at the histogram, we have a lot of dark data in the shadows and the darks regions. So what I want to do is actually kind of balance this exposure. I want to brighten it up and then after that we'll kind of do our proofing and see how uh, colors are looking after we kind of balance the exposure. So what I do uh, to kind of make these broad global adjustments is I actually go up to filter and I go to the camera raw filter and the camera raw filter is exactly the same as the Lightroom, Lightroom develop module. The interface is just different. So I'm actually going to make a very similar, almost the exact same adjustment as what we did in Lightroom to kind of balance the exposure. And if you remember, I brought up exposure quite a bit, you know, almost, almost to here. You know, it's starting to look, um, some highlight areas are starting to look blown out. Uh, but I, I really want to brighten it up. I think this is a good luminance value. And then all I'm going to do is kind of counter this and bring our highlights back down a little bit. And you can see, now when I do that, things are looking a little bit better, you know, some, somewhere around there. And we'll do some more adjustments to kind of balance this out. But now I think that the, the, the exposure and the brightness of the image overall is looking good for print. So I'm going to click OK. So um, now we can, you know, start to do uh, a little bit of proofing. So if I come up to view, you know, I can click proof colors. And now you'll get a designation up here. You can see it says Bay, View to, Bay Viewing, uh, you know, that ICC profile is listed there. If I hit Control Y or Command Y, it'll go back to kind of my, my you know, my non-proof view. So we can see, you know, if I just filter between that, here's, here's proofing, here's, uh, you know, our, our original file. You can see that this area here is kind of out of gamut, right? So... We're, we're going to correct for that. So what I'm actually going to do is I think we'll use some uh, either some targeted luminosity masks or maybe the color range uh, selection feature to kind of isolate this area. So let's um, let's start and, and let's if I just turn on proofing. So what my goal here is I want to brighten this area and I also want to saturate it because I want it looking like this, right, where the nice light was kind of hitting. So let's go into our proof and remember um, to toggle proof view or proof colors, control Y, command Y. That's kind of the shortcut that I like to use. And let's go into select and I'm going to choose color range. And color range is really nice because if I select sample colors, I'll get this color picker and I can kind of just click an area of the image. You can see when I click over here, I get a really good isolated uh, mask that I can use or selection that I can use. And this is the preview. Now remember, black reveals, white conceals. So the white areas in this selection, uh, when I use this as a mask, that's what's going to be affected. And I can adjust the range a little bit. 
Um, I think I'll leave fuzziness at the max just so we have a nice smooth feathered uh, selection. So, so somewhere in there and I'll click OK. OK, so I'm going to hit Control or Command H just to hide those marching ants. And um, with that active selection, all I have to do is actually is click this curves adjustment. And whenever you have an active selection and you click an adjustment layer, it will automatically apply that selection as a mask. So we can see everything I just did in color range is right here. So I'm actually going to bring up the brightness a little bit. I'll just look. So this is, and what I'm checking for right now, so this is kind of where we're at. Remember, this is, uh, this is with proofing. This is without. This is our original. So I'm going to turn proofing on. I'm just trying to get back to that spot. So I think what I'm going to do is just brighten it up just a little bit. You can see it's just a little. And then what I'm actually going to do is hit Control or Command on this mask. Um, and that's going to toggle the selection again. I'm actually going to add a hue saturation layer. It's targeting the same thing. Because, you know, when you increase luminance or when you brighten something, your colors are generally a little bit more washed out. So I'm actually going to saturate this area a little bit. Somewhere around there. So now things are looking pretty good. You know, here, let's go before. This is what we we're looking at. This is our original. If I toggle these on, we look at our proof. Looking pretty good, especially with that saturation. And I think what I'll do is I'll brighten this maybe just a little bit. Or I'll just adjust this a little bit somewhere in there. And I'm actually going to adjust the mask on our curves layer a little bit because you can see when I toggle it on, it's affecting this area down here, which I don't think we needed to adjust. So with my a, a black um, with black select as my foreground color, I'm going to grab my brush, do opacity around like 50%, and I'm actually just going to mask out. I'm just painting black on the mask to kind of keep these areas clean, or I should say to remove the adjustment. Okay, so that, let's toggle on here. It's a little bit brighter and a little bit saturation. I think I'll do the same thing on the saturation as I'll just use a black brush to kind of conceal or keep the adjustment out of all the areas that aren't this highlighted section here. So let's just see, here's before, here's after. If I do proofing now without, you know, if I look at my, um, so this is the original with these adjustments applied. You can see this area almost looks a little bit blown out. But when I do, when I hit Control or Command Y and turn proofing on, it's definitely not, right? It's nice and balanced. Um, we added some nice saturation, a little bit of brightness. And a lot of proofing. And just editing in general is just kind of fine tuning everything, you know, coming in here and just messing around with these sliders. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy with this. Now, um, one thing I'm going to experiment with here is I, I think everything is actually looking good um, in terms of tonality. So I actually like, you know, I, I think this right here, this file and the adjustments we just made, I think everything is ready for our sharpening, which is going to be the final step. But one thing I want to um, check out is is a mid-tones adjustment, because when we did increase that brightness uh, of the overall image, I find that a little bit of our, our mid-tone range got a little bit washed out. And I want to experiment with an adjustment here. So I'm going to open up this TK Basic panel. This is just a luminosity mask generator. And I'm going to click on this mid-tones to uh, luminosity mask. And Photoshop's going to take a little bit. It's going to show me a preview. And what I'm going to do is actually uh, use this Midtones 2 selection as a mask on a curves layer. So when everything's generated, um, there it is. I'm going to click Selection. And that's just going to turn it into an active selection. I'm going to click on Curves. And what I'm going to do is just darken things down a little bit right around there. Here's before, here's after. And you can see the difference. We you know, we haven't really lost overall uh, brightness in the image, but our midtones are a little bit darker, and I think that just makes the image look a little bit nicer. You know, without this, things are starting to get maybe a little bit washed out, too bright. When I do the midtones and I just darken them down a little bit, I'm still able to kind of maintain 
that really that that nice brightness that I know should print pretty well. But those areas that were getting a little bit washed out, you know, I'm just bringing back that detail. Okay, I'm really happy with how this image looks now in terms of overall luminance. I think the colors look good. Um, I think we're ready to get in that into that final step, which is sharpening. So I'm going to show you an awesome sharpening workflow. It was introduced to me by a really great photographer named Max Foster, and it just really brings out fine detail, but also sharpens those broader details like edges of the mountains and so on. So we're going to work through that. But the first thing we're actually going to do after we made these general adjustments is I'm actually going to resize this image. And I'm going to resize it exactly to the dimensions that we're printing at. So what I'm going to do is go up to image. I'm going to go to image size. You can see right now we're right around like a 17 or 18 by 26. Now remember we're going we're going to be doing a 24 by 36. So I'm going to type 24 in for the width because we have this linkage here. Uh, Photoshop's going to pick that up and it's going to give us you know our output should be really close to 36 inches and we want our resolution to stay at 300. So you can see 24 right around 36. Now for resample this is important you want to choose by cubic smoother with enlargement in the parentheses. So I'm going to click OK and Photoshop is actually going to enlarge this image. Now this is important because you can see with our original um, resolution it was a little bit smaller than a 24 by 36 at 300 dpi which is what we want to use. Now the reason I've done this enlargement before we're going to do sharpening is because when you enlarge you definitely lose a little bit of detail. So we want to do the enlargement so we can kind of compensate during the sharpening process. So we now have our enlarged image. Um, it's exactly 24 by 36 and we're going to do our sharpening. So the first thing we're going to do is to create a um, emerged copy. So what we're going to do is kind of take our base layer here and we're going to merge it with all of these adjustment layers and we're going to get an output, a pixel layer output on top that we can actually apply sharpening to. So it's kind of a complicated keyboard shortcut to do this, but what we're going to do is hold down Control or Command, Alt or Option, Shift, and then E. And there we go. This is our merged layer on top. So I can rename this. Uh, I'll rename this high pass. And this is going to be our first, um, our first sharpening layer here. So I'm going to zoom in to about 100%. And this will just give you a good, I recommend zooming in because it's going to allow you to kind of um, get a good idea of, of how sharpening is being applied to the image. And what I'm going to do is go up to Filter, I'm going to go to Other, and I'm going to choose High Pass. Now I find somewhere between like 0.6 to 1 pixels works really well. Um, on my Z7, which is 45 megapixels, I find that 1 pixel um, works great. So I'm going to click OK. And what we get is kind of this weird gray overlay, right? You can see the faint uh, outline of edges, but that's really it. So we need to make some changes here, but what's happening with high pass is it, the edges are important, right? Like I just mentioned, we're, we're seeing this trace outline of edges. So what high pass is doing is it, it's actually picking up those edge areas. And what it's doing is it's going to apply some really nice edge sharpening. Now it's probably hard to see, but up here, this area is the sky. And really we don't see anything traced or we don't see any outline of, of you know a cloud or anything. So that's why I love doing high pass because what high pass will do is it will sharpen uh, some of your really, your strong edges like the outline of a mountain, maybe some foliage or trees that really stick out. So it's really great for targeting those areas while also not affecting areas of low detail where you know like the sky, like the soft clouds, um, like the stream. So one more important thing that we have to do, we have to change the blend mode of this layer. So instead of normal, we're going to go down and set the blend mode to overlay. I'm going to click OK. And now let's zoom in 
Press enter and let's zoom in here and see what actually happened. Okay, so I'm going to toggle this off. Let's zoom in a little bit more here. Okay, so before high pass, after high pass. Now, it might be tough to see, but there's some fine sharpening going on here. Like if you watch the trees, if you watch the edge of the mountain, we're just getting some nice edge sharpening applied to kind of the whole image or those areas in the image where where there are edges. So you can see like the trees are coming out, a little bit of the foliage here. We're just getting some extra detail. Okay, if you look up here in like the striations of the mountain, this is no high pass. This is high pass. Okay, before, after. So we're just getting some really nice detail to the strong edges of the image overall. So that's gonna be some of the areas of foliage. Um, we're just correcting for some of that softness. Now, what we're going to do on this next layer is, I'm again, I'm going to zoom in again here. And we did correct, you know, here's before, here's after. We corrected for a little bit of that softness, but we're going to take it one step further. So what I'm going to do is create another merged layer. And we're again, we're going to use that same shortcut, Control or Command, Alt or Option, Shift E. And that's going to uh, give us another merged pixel layer on top that we can, again, apply another layer of sharpening. And what we're going to do with this next layer is um, we're actually going to go into Filter. We're going to go to Sharpen. We're going to go to Unsharp Mask. And we're going to apply a lot of sharpening, but at a very fine pixel radius. And this is kind of going to be our sharpening layer to really bring out fine details uh, in the image. And we're, we're also going to do a little bit of um, a little bit of masking as well to choose exactly where we want this um, this sharpening applied. So really cool interface here. There's two ways you can preview. You can preview at 100 bright, 100 percent right here, and I can left click and hold. So you can see before, here's after. Now I can also toggle this preview. And that'll show me the image in the background. So this is without that sharpening. This is with that sharpening, right? We can see a lot more detail coming out. So usually for a mount, you know, I'm somewhere between like high 100s, like 175 to 200, sometimes beyond that. And then radius, I'm going to do a really fine radius here, maybe like half a pixel. And here's before, here's after. You can see, right, you can see fine detail. And I actually like where this is at with 195 and a pixel radius of 0.5. Let's look at the foliage here in this area before, after. I think I can maybe bump the radius up a little bit. And what I'm looking for, this is before, you can see things are soft. So what I'm looking for is just some more apparent details to come out, like in the foliage. Um, if I look over here at my rocks, I'll move the box here. Let's look at the rocks here. Here's before, here's after. I'm getting more detail in the rocks. So I think I think I like what's happening right around here. And you know, I could experiment. I could bring up sharpening a little bit more. Maybe we do like 200 before. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Maybe right around 200 here. I'll just type in 200 and I like... Uh, I think this radius works good too. And I'm just, not, I'm not trying to over sharpen. I'm just trying to do a, a high amount of sharpening at, you know, a fairly low, like 0.5. We're at 0.7 for this one, you know, a fine, a fine radius. And I'm just checking to see, you know, can I bring out some more details? And you can see if you watch like the trees over here, here's before, here's after, right? We're really getting some nice detail. Now threshold I'm going to leave at zero, but what threshold will do is I move that from zero to the right and I increase the, the number, it'll start to hide the uh, the sharpening adjustment from like shadowed areas. Um, it does work pretty well, but we're actually going to do our own masking. Um, so we're, we're going to leave threshold at zero and we're going to do that ourselves. So I'm going to click OK and uh, we'll get the sharpening layer applied. And now I'm, when I step back here, Let's just think about where we want sharpening applied and where we don't. 
So I don't want it applied to really the stream here because I shot this at like a one second shutter speed. So very nice smooth water. So I don't want that water sharpened because I don't want to bring out any apparent noise. And then the sky, you know, very nice soft clouds. Uh, I don't want to really sharpen the clouds too much. So what I'm going to do is actually grab, I'm going to add a layer mask. So I'm going to click this icon and add a layer mask. And we're going to use our, um, I'm going to select this layer. And this is important because we're going to use color range again. So I'm going to select this pixel layer. And you can see the, the corners are highlighted. I'm going to go up to select. I'm going to choose color range. And now I'm just going to like select something in the sky. You know, I'm just clicking in the sky. It doesn't have to be, you know, perfect, but somewhere around there. I think that's good. I'll click OK. And uh, Photoshop's going to generate the selection that I can use as a mask. Okay, so I'm going to click on my layer mask now, and I'm going to hide these marching ants. It's just telling me I have a selection active. So Control or Command H. I'm going to press B to bring my brush up, and I'm actually going to go up to 100% opacity. I want to make sure I have black selected as my, my primary foreground color, because that's what my, my brush will paint. And I'm just going to paint over the sky area here and I'm, I'm gonna you know I, the mask is helping me so I'm not too worried about um, you know making broad strokes but if you look over here now as I'm painting you can see we're getting we're getting uh, you know some some black color to pop up and remember black conceals an adjustment so black is hiding that really fine sharpening from the sky So I'll paint a little bit up here, a little bit in the corner, but then it looks pretty good to me. A little bit more. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna select this layer again. I'm gonna go up to select, I'm gonna go to color range, and now I'm gonna click somewhere on the stream. And then maybe restrict the range a little bit. maybe somewhere right around here and I'll click OK. And I'm just looking for, you know, again, I want something where, um, I want a mask where the stream will be, you know, white because I'm basically gonna use it to paint black and hide the adjustment. So I'm gonna click OK. We'll get our selection. And this is fine. It just means we won't, won't show us marching ants. And I'm gonna click here and same thing. I'm just gonna paint over the stream. And you'll see the layer mask update. It's very faint, but you can see, I'm just gonna keep continuing to paint. But this active selection is basically just restricting these brush strokes, and I'm painting black, and I'm just concealing the sharpening adjustment from the stream. And then I might hit Control D, and I might just come in here just do some of these areas you know myself because I can I don't want to get too close to the foliage but I can definitely and the reason I'm doing this is because the mask that I selected is working really well but it's uh it wasn't allowing me because it was a selection it wasn't allowing me to paint at a hundred percent opacity so there's just some of these areas I really want to keep you know smooth Okay, so let's zoom in here. Let's just look. Let's look at our two sharpening layers. So if I zoom into 100, here's no sharpening. Here's uh, our high pass. And then here is our fine detail sharpening, right? No sharpening, sharpening. So you can see it's subtle, but it's definitely bringing out the fine detail. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty happy uh, with where we're at with this image. I think that luminance is good. Um, I think our sharpening is great as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna export this and we're gonna get it ready uh, for print. Or we're gonna get it ready, I should say, to order print. Now, we did soft proofing in this process. And soft proofing, again, is a way to kind of simulate on my screen how a print might look when it goes through a printer and it's you know 
mounted on acrylic. Now we're going to go another extra extra step. Now we're going to go another step. Now we're going to go another extra step. We're actually going to do a hard proof. So I'm going to export this. It'll be all ready for print. We're actually going to order a smaller acrylic so we can get a sense of what this file actually looks like when printed. And by hard proofing, before we do our, our great big print, we can actually assess where we're at with the smaller one. So if we have to come back in here and make any adjustments like increase the, the brightness or reduce the contrast or add contrast, we can do that. So what I'm actually going to do here is um, we're going to save this as a TIFF. So I'm actually going to go up to File. I'm going to go to Save As. And what I would do here is we want to, we don't want to overwrite the original. So I usually do something like my original name for the file and then maybe print and then maybe I can include more details like uh, the, the medium or something like that. It's really up to you. But you want to save your TIFF file first. So save it something like this. Click save, it'll save. And then if we have to come back to the file, we, we can access it, right? Be and again, we don't wanna overwrite the original. We just wanna create a duplicate that we can work on if we need to make uh, any changes after that hard proof. So um, I'm gonna click save and uh, we'll just leave everything at default. We'll click okay. Okay, now that that's saved, let's export for print. So let's export so we can actually send a file to Bay Photo. Now remember we're going to send a JPEG and we're going to uh, embed it. We're going to convert it to sRGB and embed that color space. Now thankfully in Photoshop that's very easy to do. So we're actually going to go up to file, we're going to go to export and we're going to choose export as. And we're going to get this interface that comes up and we can choose a bunch of different things. So um, Photoshop is automatically going to recognize the pixel values, but what we want to do is make sure we're set at JPEG for the format. We have some various options here. We want to make sure we're set at JPEG, and I want to make sure quality is set to great. Now, everything else we can pretty much, for size and canvas size, we can leave at default. By cubic automatic for resampling method is fine. Now, what we want to do, though, is come down here and Yes, we're converting to sRGB, that is good. We also wanna to check to embed that color profile. Now, Bay Photo is working with a lot of different color profiles. They might have their own printer color profiles, their display color profiles. So we wanna make sure that, that this sRGB color space is embedded so when they open this file on their devices, they know this is an sRGB file and it displays correctly. So those are the settings we're gonna choose. We're gonna click export and it's going to allow us to title so I can name this fall splendor print that's fine with me um, it's going to export as a JPEG so I'm gonna click Save and I can choose anywhere you know whether you're on Windows or Mac you can choose any location um, you know if I wanted to go into this file for print I could do that I can save it in any folder I'm just gonna put it right on my desktop so I'll click Save and Photoshop's gonna uh, export the file save it as a JPEG and after everything is done, now we're ready to move on to the next step. So we prepped our file, we did some soft proofing, and now we're gonna take it one step further. We're actually gonna order a hard proof. Now a hard proof is simply a, uh, a smaller version of the final print that we're gonna get. So in this case, we're gonna do a very small acrylic. We're gonna do a four by six acrylic print. And the benefit of hard proofing is that we're actually gonna see how our file translates from our screen to print. So soft proofing gives us some idea, right? But really, if you want to know what your print is actually gonna look like, you need to actually print it. So instead of doing this on our end, our end result, our 24 by 36, we're gonna order a smaller version, so if there are any issues, we can correct for those. Now, I don't always hard proof, but whenever I'm doing a larger print, or I'm doing it on a high quality medium like acrylic, I will get a hard proof because I want the end result to be as good as it can be.
Okay, so let's go to the Bay Photo website. And um, a cool thing if you've never ordered from Bay Photo, you can sign up and you can get 25% off your first order. So that is some really nice savings, especially if you're doing a larger print on a medium like acrylic. So let's order this hard proof. We're gonna come up to uh, the top here. We're gonna go to order. We have a lot of different options. My favorite, and I think the easiest, is order online. So I'm gonna click order online, and we just go to a web page with some details on ordering. We'll click order now. We're gonna choose acrylic prints. And here we go. So now we can kind of choose um, exactly what we want dimension wise we can also upload our image so let's start with that let's go down here let's click upload photo and i'm just going to click select files to upload and now we're just going to find wherever we put that jpeg on our computer so i'm on my desktop here i see fall splendor print this is the jpeg i'm going to click open and then we'll click upload and it is a larger file so it'll take a little bit of time but it's going to upload this image to the Bay Photo ordering platform, and then we can actually choose size and some different options for this acrylic print. Okay, so now that JPEG file is uploaded, and you can see it down here in the film strip, and I can just check this box, and it'll kind of give us our, our preview of, of the dimensions. So we're gonna go over here to size on the left, and dimensions are important, right? Because, so our final output is 24 by 36. That's what we size the print to. So what I'm gonna do for hard proofing is choose the smallest size that matches the dimension of our final print, and that's gonna be four by six. So I'm gonna choose four by six here, and now we can see that aspect ratio um, is much better, and it's correct. And then let's go down here. So now we can choose some other print options. And for hanging, we're gonna choose no hangers because like I said, this is a hard proof. I'm just gonna use this for proofing to see if we need to make adjustments for the final print. So we're not gonna choose some of these add-ons that we will um, make decisions on when we actually submit the order for the final print. We'll talk more about dye bond backing. For now, we're just gonna use white paper backing. We'll leave the surface as, as vivid and then we're not going to choose non-glare acrylic. So it's pretty simple, you know, we've selected our product, we selected our size, and then we have some other, other options we can choose from. Um, we're all good to go here though, so I'm going to click add to cart, and now we can go up to our cart. If we click on this, we can actually check out. Okay, so there is a very important option on this page. We see our cart. If we go to the right where our subtotal is, we're gonna see this color correction tab. And we can check to color correct my images, or in this case, this image. Now you do not want to check this box if you are doing any proofing or, or managing colors on your own. And I recommend that you should do it on your own. You know, uh, you don't want, you, you always want everything in, in your hands, right? You want the colors and the luminosity to look as you want, right? So to have that control, I recommend not checking this box. Okay, so it looks good. Four by six, quarter inch acrylic print, no hangers. We just want white, white paper backing. We see our price and we'll go click check out. And then here you can just type in your address. Um, just going to choose standard shipping. You can do two day if you're in a rush and we'll go to payment and I'm just going to enter my email address. I'm going to enter my payment uh, information and we'll go to review our order. Okay. So everything looks good. You know, we've got the right product addresses are good. Obviously your credit card info is in there. Uh, so we're going to go down here and click submit order. And there you go. So we submitted this order for the hard proof. Usually turnaround time is somewhere around a week. So we'll wait to get this hard proof in our hands. When we do, uh, we'll check it out and see if there's any further adjustments that we need to make before we order our final print. All right, so here is the hard proof, uh, you know, acrylic copy that we ordered from Bay Photo. Now this is why it's important to hard proof. So remember on Photoshop, everything was looking good. We did our proofing and now I actually have a physical print that I can assess. Now I actually think this print looks great. I think the overall luminance, uh, the contrast, the colors are spot on. The only area that I think we'll make a change to is that one right up here, that ridge line getting light. Now remember, we had some issues dealing with just the, the wide gamut and some of the colors in that area. Now the only thing that I, I wanna change here is I think I'm just gonna dial down the exposure 
So I think we'll go back into Photoshop and we'll just darken this area a little bit. Uh, after that, I think we can submit the order. This print's looking great. You can already see how detailed and vibrant an acrylic print is, and this is just a small one. So we'll fix up that area and then we'll submit the order for the final print. Okay, so just one quick fix here. We're just gonna dial down the luminosity in this area because it was just a little too bright and a little overblown in that hard proof print. So what I'm gonna do is actually go up to select here and I'm gonna choose color range and I'm just gonna hover this, this eyedropper, this color picker here over this ridge and I'm seeing my selection over here. So th this looks pretty good. And remember, anything that's black is not gonna get the adjustment. Anything that's white will get the adjustment. So I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna get an active selection. And then we're just gonna go over here to curves and I'm gonna use a basic curves adjustment just to decrease the brightness. So what I'm gonna do is just grab a point in the middle and just pull down a little bit. Now, what you'll see is if I toggle this on and off, it's definitely getting darker, but it's also getting oversaturated. So I'm gonna change the blend mode of this specific layer to luminosity. And that way, no matter what, if I increase or decrease the brightness, it's only going to affect luminosity and not color or saturation. So now I can come in here somewhere around there, dial it down. And let's see, here's before, here's after. And I'm mainly looking at the ridge here. So that looks good to me. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in uh, manually with brush tool, set to black, and I'm gonna change opacity to 100. And I'm just going to uh, kind of mask out those other areas because this was, this was too bright. The areas here along the river though, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to affect those areas. So now we can see if we look at our mask over here, I've just got that, you know, the white outline of the ridge here. So let's look, here's before, here's after. So that looks pretty good. I think I'll maybe take it off the mountain a little bit too. Let's see. All right, so this looks pretty good. So I'm actually gonna go through the same process as before. I'm gonna export this as a high resolution JPEG, and then we'll go back on the Bay Photo site and submit our final print order. Okay, so we're gonna go through the order process for our final print. Now I'm on the ordering screen now. I got here the same way that I did for uh, the hard proof. So if you're unsure about this, you can go back to the hard proof ordering example and uh, check that out. But we're doing the same thing. It's a quarter inch acrylic. This time the print is gonna be a lot larger. We're gonna choose 24 by 36. I've got my uh, the final copy uploaded here. So I'm just gonna check the box and we'll get a preview of that aspect ratio. And we're gonna choose a few different things now um, as compared to our, our small hard proof order. So I am gonna choose French cleat uh, mounting hangers. I just like these for hanging. They work really well and they're an inexpensive option. So we'll check that. And then I am gonna choose dye bond backing. We used white paper backing for that small uh, proof copy. But if I just click on the info here, uh, so dye bond is just going to give us a really nice backbone. It'll make the print much more rigid. Um, it's just a good foundation. And I, I like this option for really any high quality large print that I'm doing. So really anything like starting at like 16 by 24 and above, I'm using this dye bond backing. We'll stick with the vivid surface and we're not going to choose any, uh, we're not going to choose non glare acrylic. So I'm gonna add this to the cart. We're gonna go through the same process as when I ordered uh, that hard proof copy. And we're gonna see you know, what this final print looks like when it shows up. I think it's, it's gonna look great. But uh, yeah, we'll do an unboxing and, and we'll check it out. So I'm really excited to see what the final result looks like. I just opened the package from Bay Photo and checked this print out. It's still wrapped, but we're gonna unwrap it here. Uh, the cleat hanger and information on, on how to actually mount that to, to the wall is uh, attached. I like to wear um, you know, nitrile gloves just because it keeps fingerprints off when we actually do um, unwrap it. Yeah, you know, I've seen people wear cotton stuff too. I just recommend wearing, wearing something just because you know, you don't want to get a really nice big print like this. You don't want to get, 
you know, fingerprints all over it. So I'm just going to go through and uh, unwrap this beauty. I think it, from first glance, I think it turned out really, really great. So here's the cleat. And uh, what you actually do is you take a, I think it's like a 3 16th drill bit. You can pre-drill pre uh, holes in the wall and then uh, you can mount it using this and it, it, it works really well. It's, it's rock solid setup. I'm actually not sure where I'm gonna hang this one, but wherever it goes, I think it's gonna look really, really nice. Oh, I just love acrylics. I mean, you can already see kind of that holographic uh, display, how much detail and vibrance there is. I mean, I, I don't think there's a better way to uh, display your work. I mean, check this out. I think the sharpening turned out really nice. I mean, there's crisp detail. I mean, I can see, you know, the trees right here. I really like what we did with our hard proof, bringing down the highlights here, because this, this area looks good to me. You know, it's saturated, it's bright. It was a little too bright in our hard proof, but luminosity is great. It's not too dark, it's not too bright. The colors look good. So, I mean, this is it, you know, start to finish. We, we opened up that image. We made a lot of adjustments for print, right? It was very dark on the screen. We really brought up the brightness. Uh, we adjusted the colors a little bit. We did our sharpening and we, we, we did everything right. You know, we did soft proofing. We, we ordered a hard proof, a small acrylic copy. And uh, we, we made an adjustment based off that as well, right? We adjusted this area. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy with this print. And it doesn't get better than this if, if you're a photographer, you know? I mean, being out in the field, taking a shot, processing that shot in a way that appeals to you, you know, getting a, an end result, a digital end result that, that looks amazing. I mean, that's one thing. But then to go beyond that and actually create a print like this, a big print, and you can even do bigger too, but a 24 by 36 like this, and then hang it up somewhere in your home or give it to a friend or something like that. It just, uh, it's a unique feeling, you know? This, like I said, this is what photography is all about. Seeing your work displayed, seeing it printed, putting those high resolution cameras to work. So uh, this is awesome. And I love, I love Bay Photo. I mean, they do such a good job with their acrylics and uh, I'm excited to get this one uh, hung up. Now you can see uh, on the back here. So, and we do have that, we've got die bond on the back. We've got that, that mounting. Let me just grab it here. We've got our, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be able to use this. Um, once we drill this piece into the wall and hang it, you know, we can use this to, to get a really secure um, hang or mount on this print. So, yeah, let's take one last look at it. I mean, it's just awesome. Turned out really nice. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you got something out of it. And if nothing else, I hope this motivates you to take an image that you're, you're proud of or that resonates with you and, and print it big. It's an investment for sure, but I mean, look at the end result here. I'm, I'm gonna be able to put this piece somewhere in my home and every time I see it, I'm gonna be reminded of this trip. And, and, and like I said, be proud of it. You know, there's no shame in that. You know, we're, we go out, we're creative, we take these images and seeing something like this come from you just pressing the shutter button, it, it's special, no doubt. So again, I'm Matt Meisenheimer with Backcountry Journeys, and I hope you guys enjoyed uh, following me along with, with taking this digital image here all the way to print. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can just look at the end result and uh, it, it looks awesome. So thanks to all of you. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, until next time, take care.